Hey, what's up guys? I'm back and today we are going to talk about Hosea. Now there's a lot to dig into here. So this one might go a little bit longer, but um, we'll just get to it. Now Hosea, um, the title comes from the name of a minor prophet from the Hebrew Bible. And Hosea, um, in his book, he was commanded by God to, to go and marry a prostitute named Gomer. And so he does. And... <sighs> she doesn't stay faithful to him um, because she's a prostitute and so the the idea was that the relationship between Hosea and Gomer and her unfaithfulness kind of parallels uh, the relationship between God and the nation of Israel when they um, when they were unfaithful to him and they started worshiping other idols instead of him um, so that was kind of the main takeaway from that and uh, I thought that was that was a cool story I've heard um, I've heard a lot of people that I went to church with over the years kind of try to relate to that a little bit, and I don't know if there's really something to be found there um, personally, but uh, um, but it's all about like it kind of it, it paints this picture of, of unfaithfulness, and um, in the end, God's point is that even though that even though the nation of Israel is unfaithful, He will restore them and give them mercy. Um, and Hosea also, um, the song, um, in the opening line, makes reference to uh, the Crimson Cord. It says, sew my hair to a Crimson Cord and watch it dangle over the streets, um, which is a reference to an older book in the Bible um, called Joshua. And in Joshua, um, the nation of Israel, Israel hadn't really been uh, founded quite yet, and they were still um, trying to take the lands from the people who already lived there and there was the city of Jericho which is where that story takes place and um, uh, Joshua who's leading the tribe um, sends in spies to Jericho to assess um, how st the, st the city's fortifications and and things like that and then the uh, the king of Jericho finds out about the, the spies he knows that they're there so he sends men out to hunt for them and um, the spies are taken in by a prostitute named Rahab who lives in Jericho and uh, Rahab basically says to them look I know that your God is the real God um, and I know that you're coming to take our land and um, so you can stay here with me and I will provide you shelter and so that was her act of faithfulness towards God admitting to herself and to the spies that um, that their God was the real God and um, so the spies said, when we come in to take the city, um, tie a red cord from your window. She lived in the wall. Um, but they said to tie a red cord around her window, and then when the, when the Israelites came in to sack the city, they knew which place was hers, and then her and her family would be protected, and they wouldn't be, they wouldn't be killed. Um, and I thought that was a really cool story. Also, it's a story about um, deliverance and faithfulness and... Uh, this song is, is kind of it's kind of about that in a way. It's about deliverance and faithfulness and um, it's kind of me crying out for deliverance. Um, in the first two songs there's this establishment of feeling like God um, is starting to disappear um, and in Hosea there's there's me crying out for God to come back to to, um, to reward the faithfulness that I had had for for a good portion of my life by delivering me from from these things that I was experiencing, these things that I was going through, um, and the uh, the chorus of the song it says, "See, bring me down." A child was actually from a song by the tallest man on earth. It's called "Walk the Line," and uh, yes, I did lift it, but um, I took it and uh, I gave him credit for it too. But I took it because. That line itself uh, really had a deep impact on me um, because of a, of a number of different reasons. But um, there was a girl that I loved very much, and um, at the time that I met her, there was there was kind of a there was kind of a maturity difference. I think um, we had we had definitely been. I don't really want to say that per se because. It seems like she was immature, but she, but she wasn't really, but we had grown up um, very different lives. I had 
actually spent a number of years um, not being Christian, not being part of a church at all. And she had grown up in the church her whole life. And um, I originally grew up in the church, but um, spent many years just kind of uh, not being a part of it and wandering. And um, when I met her, she she was um, she had basically she had grown up in the church her whole life, and she she was a very strong Christian. She still is. And um, so we just had very different experiences. Like I I had been through a number of different things that she hadn't. Um, so in my kind of twisted mind at the time when I when I heard that line from the tallest man on earth like I kind of did see her in a way as a child um, in regards to my own experience <clears throat> that line really meant a lot to me and over the years it's kind of taken on a few different meanings there was also another girl that I really liked who um, started dating somebody else and uh, had a terrible relationship and she was about to break it off when she ended up getting pregnant and uh, she carried the child to full term and everything. But um, so then I, I, I would think about that too whenever I was seeing that line, because I still had I had those feelings even after they broke up and um, she had the child and uh, there was still kind of that in between us. Um, <clears throat> and that's kind of some background to the song. But the song itself uh, is. It's about so much more than those those little tiny references that are kind of peppered throughout. The song is about um, the song was actually originally supposed to be a duet between me and one of the girls that used to be in our band. She wasn't in the band anymore, so I ended up just singing the whole song by myself. But if you actually read the lyrics, I think in some places I put quotes around this, the lines that were meant to be sung by her. Um, and there's this dialogue that goes on between this guy and this girl, and he is ex expressing to this girl his pain and his fears and his doubts, and she's she's kind of saying, like, this is going to consume you. Um, and she's, she's kind of also retaliating with some of her own pain and fears and doubts. And uh, in the song, in the story of the song, these, these two characters kind of start to form a relationship, and it becomes... A relationship based off of, of, of pain and, and not being healthy and, um, and that kind of flourishes into that and it ends up being a bad thing um, but the song is all about that kind of relationship between those two characters it's all about kind of finding solace in in other women besides um, besides who you really love and uh, if I were to draw a comparison between myself and kind of the references throughout the song, I wouldn't really say that I relate to Hosea so much as I relate to Gomer, um, the prostitute, because of my my own unfaithfulness and my own um, reaching out for for solace and comfort uh, through all my pain rather than just confronting the pain itself and trying to move on. Uh, it was all about finding kind of vice in sickness and uh, looking to those things for comfort and um, so this song um, the first couple of minutes um, and then the, the outro also are from uh, were originally supposed to be the entire song and then um, at a certain point I just I kind of realized like I wanted it to be more I wanted it to have more of a of emotional impact so I, I wrote I ended up writing it that, for, that whole first section into this 11 minute long epic musical suite. And uh, it's kind of um, almost a sequel to uh, a song from our very first album called Seafoam, and Seafoam was like that too. Seafoam was a duet that I wrote with uh, my friend Katie who was in the band for a while too. And Seafoam was, was this long epic musical suite. It was all about the Little Mermaid. And uh, in that song, Katie, wrote all of her lines from the point of view of the Little Mermaid, and then I wrote all of my lines from the point of view of, of the sea. And um, it, ex it kind of expresses this feeling of like wanting more than what you have, um, and longing for a life outside of what you've been given. And, um, and the sea is coming back with this, like, I've already given you everything, you don't need more. And um, <clears throat> so those were all the lines that I wrote. and. Hosea didn't really, wasn't really about like a Disney anything. It wasn't 
truly like a sequel to Seafoam, but it kind of filled the same role in the album that uh, Seafoam did in the first album, and I even put them in the same spot. They're both the third song on each album. Um, but if I could relate it, I would say that Jose is not really so much about... It's kind of like the antithesis of Seafoam, where Seafoam is about wanting more than what you have, and Jose is about having so much that you don't know what to do with. And um, you end up just kind of imploding <clears throat> and reaching out to all these to all these things that are unhealthy for comfort and uh, that kind of becoming what your life is about um, <clears throat> and how bad relationships form and things just draw you in deeper and deeper and deeper and uh, this song I would say is my favorite song on the perfect era I would say it is some of my proudest songwriting to date and uh, just because of the composition of it all when I wrote it I wasn't really thinking so much about like what's a cool chord progression or anything like that like I usually do um, but I was just thinking about okay like how do I carry this mood this because because this mood is awesome how do I keep it going and going and going and where does it go next um, and I ended up something I look back and I don't even like I, would, I can't even remember what I was thinking when I decided to go from this chord to that chord it just felt right and that's uh, that's part of why Jose is one of my favorite songs or is my favorite song on the album and also because I get to play electric guitar on it and I get a cool uh, electric guitar solo uh, duel that I get to do with Luke um, and on top of that I love Jose so much because this is one of the songs on the album that I can really tell all four of us really felt the song, felt what it was about, and uh, felt the mood of it all. And everybody carried the mood. You can hear the passion, the emotion, the anguish behind the drums and the bass and the guitars and the vocals. You can hear it all kind of peppered throughout. And uh, there was a point when we had a different girl in our band. We've gone through three um, before we decided to just not have any. But um, the last girl that we had, um, towards the end of her being a part of the band, she uh, got pregnant and she uh, she already has one kid, but she, she got pregnant again um, and she kind of felt as if her, her life was kind of falling apart for a little while and she, we would sing the song at practice and we would sing it at shows and we'd come to that line that said, you bring me down, oh child, and I could, I could tell like we were all just into it. We all felt it, we all felt what was going on, we all felt the feelings, the emotions, uh, the passion, and, and the pain, we all felt it, um, because it's because it's real, it's just it's something that's, that's not ethereal, it's not nebulous at all, it's just a thing that people go through all the time when they, they kind of see that life isn't really about what they thought it was going to be about, and life isn't as perfect as they thought it was going to be ever, because that's just how life works, it's never perfect, but... Um, so, I don't know if I have much more to say about Hosea, but uh, it's definitely my favorite song on the album. Um, it definitely carries the most feeling, the most emotion for me, and I think it's uh, those feelings are always going to be timeless for me because I'm always gonna, I'm always gonna be that imperfect person that reaches out to to things for comfort, um, even when they aren't good for me, even if I don't know that at the time. But um, and I think it's it's something that probably can speak to a lot of other people also, um, or at least that's what I hope, that's what I've always hoped with all my songs, but, um, uh, yeah, that's it, so thanks for, thanks for sticking around for this long, that's Hosea, um, I hope you guys like the album, thanks for watching.